Far from the days of word of mouth and weekly magazines showcasing games on their front covers, now literally any idea can be kickstarted from code to gameplay, with an audience of thousands watching every step. The industry is moving faster than ever, and that means marketing in the traditional sense is out the window. In a world where Among Us, Fall Guys, and Phasmophobia can sell millions overnight, sometimes you just need good old fashioned recommendations to point you in the right direction. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are 9 awesome video games that got zero marketing. Number 9. Wreckfest If you played the Destruction Derby games on PS1 and were waiting for someone to do an awesome down-to-earth car carnage game since, Wreckfest more than has you covered. Featuring an immaculate physics engine that encourages you to throw yourself sideways into corners or barrel into opponents for takedowns, it's the career mode that varies things up in often hilarious ways. Keep in mind you have exemplary physics and deformation models, meaning cars thrown off the track will obliterate signage, stacks of tyres and each other. I'm talking lawnmower battle royales, you in a school bus wrecking as many other cars as possible, or a ton of combine harvesters in a destruction derby. There's standard dirt racing with a great set of upgradable cars too, rounding out a nostalgia tinged package for certain old school petrol heads that feels genuinely fresh for everyone else in a genre otherwise taking itself pretty seriously. Number 8. Immortals Phoenix Rising Though Ubisoft failed to market this whatsoever, assumedly stumbling to differentiate what is literally Assassin's Creed meets Breath of the Wild right when Assassin's Creed Valhalla itself was going to be their next big hitter, it only feels more worthwhile when you pick this up yourself. The story is pointless and a lot of the writing is try-hard cringe, but that amounts to about 2% of the package. The rest of the time Immortals just plays good, has a sumptuous mix of over-animated combat, puzzles and unlocks, and makes no bones about getting to the meat of every gameplay mechanic for a solid 20 hours. It results in a genuinely hard to put down series of gameplay loops, with you defeating enemies and mini bosses with chunky combos, before solving a puzzle or two on your way to unlock a new ability, noting a collectible in the distance and stumbling onto a new piece of armour on your way there. Making it so light attacks replenish the meter used for specials, while specials themselves then drain enemy block meters, is just the beginning of AC Odyssey's dev team implementing neat gameplay ideas that make the whole experience pop. No one will ever believe that one of Ubisoft's best 8th gen games, with a killer Xbox Series XS upgrade no less, is called Immortals Phoenix Rising. Number 7. Risk of Rain 2 for all the roguelikes that become household names, your Binding of Isaacs, your Rogue Legacies, your Dead Cells, Risk of Rain barely gets a look in. Perhaps down to the original having a bare bones art style and even the sequel maintaining a go on, you figure it out, lack of a tutorial, once this newer instalment clicks, it's very hard to put down. Not only do you have an incredibly atmospheric, occasionally banging synthwave soundtrack fleshing out this idea of a platoon of marines going after swaths of bugs and ginormous bosses, but the array of unlocks and character traits you acquire is just mind-boggling. For a game to take a genre mostly rooted in 2D and still transfer its carnage and enemy juggling blurs of weapons, auto shields and kill perks into 3D should be commended. Number 6. Kentucky Route Zero to this day, and I'm talking post-completion, I don't know how the hell you market something like Kentucky Route Zero. It's a game about mundanity, about middle America on the cusp of industrial and economic overhaul, as something like a quiet drink in a bar becomes less and less desired. It's about main man Conway and his dog, who you can name Blue or Homer, trying to deliver one last package to an address, only to get swept up on the Zero itself, a road that links various disparate groups of people, ideals and time periods. Kentucky Route Zero released in five parts, the first of which was way back in 2013, finally completing its tale in 2020. To some, it's a narrative accomplishment with human moments and memorable character exchanges on the level of some of the finest authors who ever lived. To others, it's a point-and-click adventure where a very old dog wears a straw hat and a couple of skeletons turn up at a few different points. Either way, Kentucky Route Zero is the definition of art house in video games, and even if you don't understand much of it by the end, you'll be glad you went on the journey. Number 5. Haven Upending all expectations for what they would do after the pulse-pounding action title Fury, Haven sees the game bakers pen a tale about two young lovers fleeing a failed utopia to start a life for themselves on a new planet. Initially, it's super cringy, but the writing is all in service of creating a relatable human couple. K and U gain confidence over time and are all out dorks front to back, somewhat trying to impress each other with jokes and shared interests, but mainly realizing that they can make this work, despite barely knowing each other when they first departed. The whole 
whole game can be played optionally in same screen co-op too, and you'll spend your time air surfing like Journey's sand level or engaging in some super cool turn based combat where you control both characters at once. Depending on the enemy, maybe one of you needs to stay on the defensive while another charges up to strike later. Creatures need to be pacified for the fight to end, and that sometimes means doing so with both K and U at the same time. More powerful abilities unlock and you'll be back flipping off mountainsides in no time, but the real driving force here is a quirky but lovable relationship between the pair, plus a solid rewarding loop of scouring the planet, then enjoying some conversation, backstory and cooked meals at the end of each day. Number 4. The Hong Kong Massacre a very unfortunate title that likely meant a lot of people just didn't go anywhere near this, Hong Kong Massacre is actually Hotline Miami meets Max Payne, where my friend Pedro managed to get on a few Game Pass sizzle reels and initially turned heads after its first trailer on Steam, it feels like developers Vresky are flying a flag all their own. Thankfully, once you're in, it's a gameplay style reminiscent of those mid-2000s titles where everybody was experimenting with slow motion and bullet time. A cop story told in flashback with the main character being interrogated, it's an excuse to wander into a series of neon-kissed locales, and just go crazy with leaping dives across tables, windows shattered and debris kicked across the screen in glorious 60fps. Hong Kong Massacre's cutthroat difficulty might not be for everyone, but once you learn to dance in between the bullets and emerge on the other side, this is a solid spin-off from Denetton's work on Hotline that deserves a wider audience. Number 3. Visage a lot of games have tried to take what Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro were crafting with PT and make it into a full game. Allison Road was one of the first, Resident Evil 7 upended the franchise's entire feel, though Capcom would say they were always planning this change anyway, but October 2020 saw the horrifying Visage finally drop on consoles. In early access for quite some time beforehand, Visage had been gathering steam as the horror aficionado's horror game, taking a lot of cues from that opening corridor of PT and almost replicating it on the ground floor of the house you're in, Visage is directly about figuring out why a father executed his entire family. Again, super PT, but it's the atmosphere and restraint that means when a scare does come, it damn near takes your head off. Visage does suffer a little from a minuscule budget, meaning very little animation is present for your main character or the enemies themselves, but look past that and you've got a bona fide horror gem. Number 2. The Last Campfire Let's say you're Hello Games. Choosing how to even approach the idea of trust us again, we've got more games to sell is a Herculean effort. Coming off No Man's Sky and all the messy as hell lies, broken promises and lackluster launch day versions that made up its reception for over a year, Hello Games quietly dropped a trailer for The Last Campfire at the Game Awards in 2018 and that was about it. Crafted by just three members of the team with another composing a serene guitar-backed score, The Last Campfire would have to stand on its own two feet, a lovable gem with an audience who'd have to choose to care again. Thankfully, the final product is a Moorish blend of old-school Zelda dungeon puzzles, sprinkled with just enough narrative pull to see you through. Playing as Ember, you set about helping another lost soul find peace after being left behind, but the majority of the time you're slotting items into housing, rotating parts of the environment or returning items to NPCs. It sounds so simple, so played out and so done, but a return to this uber satisfying gameplay first design is the perfect short palate cleanser between anything else. And number 1. Spiritfarer a phenomenal, touching and unique game about trying to comfort those close to you before they pass away, Spiritfarer can obviously hit home pretty damn strong right now, but it's an exemplary title regardless. Half platformer, half management sim, you're tasked with looking after an expansive crew of animalized spirits, making their meals, going on loyalty quests, hugging them and finally escorting them to the moon door, where they'll slip away into the great beyond. While the game's art style is gorgeously hand-drawn, its hugs extra tight and its jump animations energetic, it's the thematics here that house a powerful message of genuine care. Backed up by a beautifully minimalist score that beds itself super deep if you happen to listen weeks or months after finishing, Spiritfarer is the crowning achievement of Thunder Lotus Games, and an essential pairing of gameplay and story. And those are just 10 recommendable titles that I'd say got zero marketing. Let me know your favourites down in the comments below and please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com and I'll catch you soon.